Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today I have another very easy, very tasty keto candy recipe for you. Today I am going to show you how to make keto Twix bars with a two ingredient keto caramel sauce that you can use in any recipe that needs caramel. This recipe is super easy, super tasty. And if you want a printable version of this, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find printable versions of this and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto you know, recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything from those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Line a small baking sheet with parchment paper. Now, depending on the size of your baking sheet, you might not need to cover the whole baking sheet. I have a mid-sized baking sheet, so I didn't need to cover the whole thing with parchment paper, so I just took a wide strip down the middle. This only makes about eight Twix bars, so you don't need a very big baking sheet. In a large mixer bowl, Combine 27 grams or one-fourth cup of coconut flour, 44 grams or one-fourth cup of golden monk fruit sweetener or brown sugar sweetener of your choice. You can also use granulated sweetener if you prefer granulated sweetener over the brown sugar taste. You can also put more or less depending on how sweet you want your cookie bar. Add three grams or a half teaspoon of baking powder and one gram or one eighth teaspoon of salt. Whisk or sift these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add one large room temperature egg, make sure it is room temperature so it stirs into your ingredients more smooth. Stir the egg into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been moistened. Add two tablespoons of room temperature butter that's been slightly softened. Make sure it's just softened, not melted. And a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Stir these all together until everything is fully combined and you have a soft dough that is formed. If you need to, you can use your fingers to press all the ingredients together. You want to make sure everything is combined, especially the butter. Sometimes the butter can be a little bit more stubborn to combine, so you want to really make sure that it is fully combined. Once everything is combined, roll the dough into a smooth ball and massage the ball for about 30 seconds. This is just to make sure of the texture. When you first start massaging the dough, it may feel a little bit sticky, but as you massage the dough, that stickiness should go away. Your dough should end up being a little bit moist and should be smooth, but not sticky and not crumbly. Roll the dough back into a smooth ball and place it back into your mixing bowl. Then put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for about five minutes so that the dough can firm up slightly. That way when you shape it into the Twix bars, it will keep its shape a lot better. After five minutes, remove the dough from the refrigerator and massage it just a couple times. Again, this is just to make sure of the texture. You want to make sure that the dough didn't dry out when it was in the refrigerator, so you still should have a slightly moist, smooth dough that is not sticky or crumbly. Scoop the dough out one tablespoon at a time onto your prepared baking sheet. Roll each dough scoop into a smooth ball. Then form the dough into a flat rectangle of your desired length and your desired thickness. Think about what you're trying to replicate. You're trying to replicate the, the cookie part of a Twix bar. So you're not wanting the rectangle to be extremely flat, but you also don't want it to be too puffy. When these cook, they do puff up just a little bit. They don't puff up a whole lot, but they do puff up a little bit. So... Keep that in mind when you're shaping your rectangles. 
The length of the bar isn't that important. It can be however long you want it to be, but you do want to make sure that all of your cookie bars are the same thickness. Otherwise, you will not have it even cook. So you want to make sure that they are the same thickness. I flattened mine out to roughly about two and a half inches long and one and a half inches wide, give or take a little bit. But again, it's up to you what size you want your Twix bars to be. Once they're all on your baking sheet, place them in your preheated oven and bake them at 375 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes or until they're browned around the edges. Mine took about 14 minutes. You're wanting these cookies to, to be crispy, so you do cook them a little bit longer than what you would a traditional cookie. Once they're baked, remove them from the oven. They still will not be fully crispy, but they will crisp up as they cool. Allow them to cool on the pan for about 10 minutes or until they're starting to crisp up. Again, they will still not be fully 100% crispy, but they will continue to crisp up as they cool. So place them on a wire rack and allow them to cool completely or until they become crispy. Once the cookies are cooled, we're going to make our two ingredient caramel sauce. In a small microwave safe bowl or a large microwave safe measuring cup, place three tablespoons of butter, microwave it on high in 15 second intervals or until it is completely melted. Make sure you stir after each 15 second interval so that your butter does not burn. Mine took about 35 seconds altogether. Everybody's microwave is different, so you're just looking for the butter to be completely melted. Once it is completely melted, remove it from the microwave, use a fork, and give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that it is 100% melted. Add 42 grams or one fourth cup of brown monk fruit allulose blend or brown sugar sweetener of your choice. The monk fruit allulose blend will give you the smoothest and best tasting caramel, but any brown sugar sweetener will work and will still taste delicious. Use a fork and stir the brown sweetener and the butter all together until it's fully combined and smooth. You want to stir this for a good 20 to 30 seconds because you really want to make sure that sweetener is completely combined and dissolved. You want a smooth texture in your caramel. Now remember that you can use this caramel sauce in any recipe that calls for caramel, so it doesn't have to be just used for this recipe. As you're stirring it and the caramel sauce is starting to cool, you should start filling the caramel sauce getting a little bit thicker and getting more of a sticky type texture. Once it is fully combined and smooth, set it aside for a minute and allow it to cool to room temperature. And again, as it keeps cooling, it will continue to get thicker and more sticky. That's what you're wanting. You're wanting it to be smooth and sticky, but still able to spread it. Once the caramel's at room temperature, spread it evenly over the top of each one of the cooled cookie bars. You can put however much caramel you think you're going to want. I use about one to one and a half teaspoons of caramel but that's just only a thin, light layer of caramel. If you want more, you can always double that. If you do decide to double it and make more, you'll need to double the caramel recipes. And if your caramel seems like it's too thick to spread, you can always pop it in the microwave for just a couple seconds so that you're able to spread it over the top of your cookie bars. Once the cookies are coated, line another small baking sheet, place the caramel coated cookie bars, onto your lined baking sheet, then place them in the refrigerator and allow them to chill in the refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the caramel has firmed up. It should not be dripping down the sides at all. It should have a firm, sticky texture. Just before you remove the caramel cookie bars from the refrigerator, in a wide microwave safe bowl, place 50 grams or one third cup of keto chocolate chips and one teaspoon of coconut oil. Microwave these on high in 15 second intervals or until the chocolate chips are fully melted. Once the chocolate is fully melted, use your fork and give it a good stir. You wanna make sure that the oil and the chocolate chips are completely combined and completely melted. 
Remove the caramel cookie bars from the refrigerator and place the cookie bars one at a time into the melted chocolate. Then use a spoon and coat the caramel cookie bars completely with chocolate. Make sure the entire bar is covered with the chocolate. If the chocolate thickens as you're coating the cookie bars, then you can just pop it back in the microwave for a couple seconds until it melts again. After they're coated in the chocolate, use two forks to remove the coated Twix bars and place them on a lined baking sheet. Then place them back in the refrigerator for another 10 to 15 minutes or until the chocolate is firm. Once the Twix bars have all firmed up, Remove them from the refrigerator. Place them on the serving platter of your choice. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container in the refrigerator for up to one week. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button. Click that subscribe button. Leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make, and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, Keep cooking.